Excel has a very important function that is the forecast function. With this formula, we can evaluate the value of something in the future. And we can also can apply the same function to a chart to help us visualize better the data. We have two different examples to explore here. In the first one, we're going to make an appraisal, an evaluation of the future value of a rare golden coin using a report that I have. And then whenever I want to see a value in the future, such as 2030, enter, the coin value is going to automatically update for me using the forecast function. And basically, we can do the same thing, but with a different example, as I said before using a chart in Excel and a sales report. So let's go. In this first example, we need to evaluate the future value for a rare golden coin. And as the data, I already have a report with the years and also the coin value for each one of those years. The first data that I have is 1968 and the value is $3,000. The last data that I have is 2024 and the value is roughly $60,000. But if I want to make a prediction or I want to calculate the value in the future, I can use the forecast function to help me. I want to make here a forecast. So let's say, what is the value of this golden coin in the year 2030? Equal sign and then forecast function. As we can see, there is one, two, three, four, five, six different forecast functions that we can use. Each one of those forecast functions are made by using a different mathematical calculation. The one that I want to use here, and the one that I think is the most common, is the forecast.linear. Double-click here, one, two. The linear stands for a linear formula, a linear calculation. Basically, we have three different arguments. X, no Y, and no X. The X stands for the value that we are looking for, or in this case, 2030. And the Y and the X stands for the axis that we have in a chart in Excel. So let me show you here an example. Basically, we can have a chart like this with two different axes. The one vertically is the Y axis and the one horizontally is the X axis. We know that the X axis used to represent the categories. So January, February, March, and on and on, for example. And the Y axis used to represent the values or to create the height of the categories. So let's say January, I have a column like this and the height of the column corresponds to a specific value February has a different height and corresponds to a different value. And March also has different column height that corresponds to a different Y. So basically, this is how a chart works in Excel or in general. And we can apply the same logic to the arguments that we have. So the X is the value that we are looking for. Let me click over the cell that I have to the left and then comma. Now the Y, as we saw before, is the values. So let me select everything as the value. Okay. Comma. And the X is the category. Let me select the ear because the ear is my category. If I press enter, as we can see, this is the future value. But something that we need to be mindful here, even though Excel know the values that we currently have and the previous values for all those different years, Excel doesn't know about the rarity of the coin, how rare is the coin, or the condition of the coin, or if the coin is actually made of gold or silver or brass or doesn't matter you know so this is very important to be mindful of excel does know the mathematic behind the forecast formula however it doesn't know anything besides of this realm of mathematic that i as i said before the rarity of the coin or the condition or whatever right so we need to be mindful about that anyway the year 2030 the roughly value is seven thousand dollars and i can also change the year so let's use another one the last data that I have is the 2024, the date of 2024, and the value is 58,000. And if I change here to a date that is more closer to the last one, let's say 2025 and then enter, I'm going to have a different result. And as we can see, maybe it's correct because it makes sense. 62,000 is very close to 58. And if you, we follow here the logic, 54, 55, 7, 58. 62 maybe okay it's, it makes sense now let's move on to another example where we can continue to use the forecast function however here i want to also apply a chart and the way we can compare the forecast within the chart with the forecast the function itself uh, first i have a sales report with the values sold per month let me select everything and then i can go to insert 
and select the chart. Let's use for this example a line chart. Okay, like this. The chart is already done. I can actually click in this little circle, hold and drag to the right to make the chart a little bigger, like this. Now we can go to chart design to the left, add chart element, and go to trend line. Because within these options, I have one that is very interesting. There is the linear. And as we used it before, forecast.linear. Here we have something similar. However, within the chart. Let me click. And yeah. Now, as we can see, we have this line with those little dots. And if I right click in the chart, and then I can go to format chart area. Now we can click in the, in the line of the forecast and we can make a lot of changes clicking this option right here. Trend line options. Let's say the less value that we have corresponding to the less value that we have in the report. That is October of 2024. But if I want to see the next month, November, December, January of 2025, February of 2025, and on and on, I want to see the prediction, the future values, the forecast for this report that I have. I can change how many periods I want to see forward using this forecast right here. And I can also go backwards. But let's stick for this video with the forward option. If I input the number one here and press enter, the chart is going to grow one period to the right or to the future. As we can see here, October is actually the last value data that I have in the report. But now we also have the November into our forecast. And if I increase one unit here, now I want to see two periods in the future. And if I press enter, as we can see, a new month is going to be updated for me. That is December. Let's input another one, three, and then enter. Let me close this pop up. And as we can see in the chart, January of 2025 is equal to this point right here, this intersection. And if I want to see the value of this coordinate in the Y axis, I just need to bring this line to the left and I'm going to have the result of roughly $30,000. Okay, so uh, remember this number, January of 2025 is equal to roughly $30,000. Okay, $30,000. Now let's use the equal sign the forecast function as we learned it before and see if we can have the same result as we are having in the chart forecast dot linear one two and then the x is going to be the cell that i have to the left but i can't select because this yellowish bar is above the cell that i need to use the cell is underneath this yellowish bar so let me click in any other cell like this and with the arrow key i can move it to the left and then move it up like this right gone the y values the y value is the height of the chart remember so let me select all those values comma the x value is the category that we have so let me select the mouse okay i done let me press enter and the value is roughly almost thirty thousand dollars so for sure it's a hundred percent correct and this is how we can use the forecast function in excel either in the chart or in the function itself i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow as every day has a new video i see you there